In this video we will connect a stepper motor to the Picoborg Reverse. The Picoborg Reverse can control stepper motors up to 5 amps. OK, firstly we need to identify which of the wires are a pair. These are the wires which are connected to each coil. The easiest way to find this out is to check the stepper motor datasheet. In the case of the stepper I'm using today, it's a 4 wire stepper by Applied Motion Products. You can see from this datasheet that red and blue are a pair that is, they are connected to one coil. We can also see that yellow and white are a pair connected to the other coil. OK, so first we'll connect one pair up to M1. The polarity, positive and minus, we can alter in software later, but getting this around the wrong way will just make the stepper turn backwards. We will connect the other pair, yellow and white, up to M2 plus and minus. Now we'll connect up to a power source. I'm going to use a 6 volt battery pack. We need to make sure the polarity of the battery is correct. We can check which connectors are ground and V plus under the Picoborg reverse. This stepper motor is a 1 amp 4.3 ohm stepper, so from Ohm's law it expects us to supply it with 4.3 volts, so I'll modify the output and software in a moment. OK, so now I'll show you the software. Log into the Raspberry Pi. Change to the PicoBorg rev directory that we created in video 1. We'll execute dot slash pbrstepper dot pi. Make sure the s is uppercase. And we'll give it a number of steps to turn and we can see it rotating forwards. Give it a different number, we can see a different number of steps. Or a negative number to get it to turn the opposite way. Right, so back to the 6 volt supply and 4.3 volt stepper motor problem. Technically, we've been very bad and used 6 volts across a 4.3 volt motor. This could mean that we drove it past 1 amp to 1.4 amps, so we could have blown up the stepper. In reality, in this example, with the internal resistance of the batteries, tolerance of the stepper and voltage drops in the drivers, we should be okay but if we left the motor on for a long time it might heat up and cause a problem. So what can we do? Well we could turn the motor off for periods of time to let it cool down then turn it on again then off and so on. But what if we could do this automatically? We can with PWM. PWM stands for pulse width modulation. We want a 4.3 volt source but we have a 6 volt source. 4.3 divided by 6 gives us 0.72, so we'll set the PWM output to 72%. What this means is that the Picoborg reverse is momentarily putting out 6 volts, followed by momentary 0 volts. We vary the ratio, or the amount of time that it puts out 6 volts compared to 0 volt. This happens very quickly, and the inductance of the coil resists the fast change in current. If we had a 50% PWM, we would have 6 volts for half the time, 0 volts for the other half, which approximates a 3 volt source. It's not without drawbacks, but it's very useful for controlling speed in DC motors, equivalent power in steppers, brightness of LEDs and many other uses. 
This normally does mean we'll use more power, the stepper will get hotter, its life won't be as long as it could be. The best plan is to use the closest voltage we can to the stepper. In the Picoborg reverse, we have an under voltage protection below 6 volts, so 6 volt is the minimum we can use. OK, so let's modify the software to give us the 4.3 volts. First we'll set up some variables for our stepper voltage and for our battery voltage. and we'll make a calculation to work out the PWM level from these. Now we need to apply it in the four cases of the script where we set the power levels of the controller. Firstly on these two lines and now on these two. Save this and we should be done. The other point is once the stepper motor has done its move, the software continues to tell the motor to hold the position. That is, it is currently still energising the coil. If we try to turn it with our fingers, we can see it offers resistance to doing this. Depending on your mechanical implementation, this might be the effect you're after, or you might want it off. To change this, we need to add a line to tell the Picoborg reverse to stop output at the end of the step. We do this by calling the motors off function. Now between moves, we can turn the motor with our fingers.